In this video, I will use this problem to show you how to find limits using natural logs. I warn you that this problem is long and involved. It's very challenging, but sometimes this is the only way. First, I need to show you that if you know the answer, if you know the value of a limit, you can do operations with this equation, doing certain things to both sides of this equation if you're very careful. But uh, first, instead of calling this f of x, I'm going to call it y instead, just to make this easier to write. So let's say I, I have the limit as x approaches infinity of y, and that turns out to be 5. So I can do various things to both sides of this equation. Uh, for example, let's say I squared both sides. Uh, this would still be a valid limit. So I could have the limit as x approaches infinity of y squared will equal 25. Or if I wanted to add something to both sides, then I would have the limit as x approaches infinity of y squared plus 7 is equal to 32. Next, I need to remind you about how logarithms work. If I had the natural log of y is equal to 5, and I wanted to get y by itself, I could put a base e on both of these and still have a valid equation. It's called exponentiating both sides of the equation. Uh, natural log and base e are inverse functions, so these cancel each other out, and I would end up having y by itself, and I'd have y is equal to e to the fifth power. So, so that is a, a very brief review of an operation you can do with logarithms. That operation I just showed you still works if you have the limit. So if I knew that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log y is equal to 5, and I wanted to find out what the limit of y is by itself, I could still do that trick. I could still exponentiate both sides like this and it would still have the same limit. So I could say the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y is equal to e to the fifth power. This is something we will need at the end of the problem. Let's begin. To make things simpler, I'm going to take this entire part of the problem and I'm going to call it y. In other words, let's let y equal this expression right here. In that case, the original problem can be written more simply as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y. So our goal is to figure out what this is. By the way, we could not do direct substitution because if we substitute 0 for x, then we're dividing by 0, and that is undefined. And none of the techniques we've learned so far will allow us to solve this. So we're going to have to use logarithms. Uh, I need to remind you of another uh, property of logarithms that you may have forgotten. Let's say I have the natural log of x to the third power. If I want to, I can take this 3 and put it in the front. So this would be equivalent to 3 natural log x. So we just went like that. I'm going to take this equation right here and do some work on it. So I'm going to bring it over here, and I have y equals e to the x power plus x all raised to the 2 over x power. I would love to not have this weird exponent. If somehow I could take this and put it in the front, that would be so much better. But that's something you can only do with logarithms. If only there was a way I could get logarithms in here. Wait a minute, why don't we take the natural log of both sides of this equation? That would give me the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of e to the x power plus x all raised to the 2 over x power. Now that this is a logarithmic expression, I can take an exponent 
and put it to the front like I reminded you a second ago. So now we have this equation. Now that the 2 over x is not an exponent, this is actually something that I might be able to find the limit of. So how can I get limits back into this equation? Well, I could take the limit of both sides of this equation, and it would look like this. Kabam! Now I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log y is equal to this limit on the right. Now let's compare this to what we are looking for. We want the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y, and right now we're on track to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log y, which is not quite the same. But trust me, if we can find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log y, we can get y by itself later by doing an algebraic trick like I showed you during the introduction. So let's just proceed on and see if we can find this limit right here. My strategy will be to rewrite this as a fraction and see if I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to end up taking the fraction of 2 over x and I'm going to put all of this in the numerator with the 2. Remember, we can only use L'Hopital's rule if we get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity after direct substitution. So let's see what happens if we try to do direct substitution. Uh, well, obviously in the denominator, x is approaching 0. So the denominator definitely approaches 0. But what about the numerator? If x is 0, then we're going to have 2 times the natural log of e to the 0 power plus 0. Uh, let's just follow this out. The 0 is basically gone. e to the 0 power is 1. Any constant to the 0 power is going to be 1. So then I'm going to have 2 times the natural log of 1. But we know that the natural log of 1 is 0, and 2 times 0 will be 0. So the numerator is approaching 0 as well. So because we are getting 0 over 0, we are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, which says we can take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator without changing the limit. By the way, in order to use L'Hopital's rule on the AP exam, you have to show this little step right here, showing that you know that the numerator and denominator both approach zero, or they could both be infinity. But this little step is mandatory. Please show it exactly like this with two separate arrows. So I'm about to take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Let's get the denominator out of the way first. The derivative of x is simply 1. Now the numerator. When you have a constant in the front, you can just leave the constant there and move on to taking the derivative of whatever comes next. We know that the derivative of natural log x would be 1 over x. Okay, that's just a rule that we have memorized, that if you have a natural log x, and then you take the derivative, you're going to get 1 over x. Um, however, because this is not a simple x, then I'm not going to have 1 over x. I'm going to have 1 over all of this. I will have 1 over e to the x plus x. But because I have this function inside of a function, I have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of this inner function. So what is the derivative of e to the x power plus x? So the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. And then the derivative of x is 1. So the derivative of this inner function is 
e to the x power plus 1. It will be simpler if I take this and put it in the numerator. So on the next step, you're going to see this uh, inner function in the numerator, and I won't write the 1 anymore. In fact, while I'm at it, I think I will put the 2 in the numerator as well. So now we have this. Let's see if we can do direct substitution now without breaking any rules. I think this is going to work out okay. We have e to the 0 power, which is 1. So there's no problem in the numerator. In the denominator, e to the 0 power again is 1. So I have 1 plus 0, so this is 1. So I'm not dividing by 0 or anything. So I'm going to just uh, make a new column so I have some space. So as I was mentioning, e to the 0 power is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I'm going to have a 2 right here. This 0 does not need to be written any longer, and e to the 0 power is 1, so I didn't really even need that. So in the end, this limit is going to equal 4. Remember, we don't really want the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log y. We want to find out what happens to just y by itself. So how can I get the y by itself? Well, remember, in the introduction of this video, I showed you that we could do operations to both sides of this limit equation, almost as if the limit expression wasn't there. It's still valid. And specifically, I showed you this trick, where we can exponentiate both sides of the equation like this. The base e and the natural log cancel each other out, and that will leave y by itself. So that brings us here. Believe it or not, this is the final answer. I'm going to scroll back and show you where we started before all of this craziness, but we were looking for the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y, and we found it because this is just a constant. e to the fourth power is just a constant, so this is the answer. So let's scroll back, or I keep this in your mind, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y, and we found that it equals e to the fourth power. So scroll back through all the craziness. Seems like so long ago. And remember, we had decided that all we needed to find was the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y. And we now found that this is e to the fourth power. So this is the final answer. And remember, just uh, one more step backwards. The original problem was the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of this yellow expression. But we replaced it with y. So if we found the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y, we were indeed finding the original limit. So e to the fourth power is the final answer. Phew! That was a lot for one problem. Um, quick speech, you guys. I know when you see a long, crazy problem like this, your temptation is to say to yourself, you know what, this problem is too much. I'm just going to skip it and hope that it doesn't show up on the test. But guess what? This problem always shows up on the test. The, the one that you skip is always the one that shows up on the test and then you wind up losing 10 points. Also, what if this shows up on the AP exam? The one problem you don't know, and then there it is on the AP exam. So don't skip this problem. If you need to rewatch this a few times to, to get it down and practice, do what you need to do. This is AP Calculus AB. I believe in you. You can handle this. Don't skip it. Go ahead and try to learn it.